All right. Namaste, class. Namaste, Chef. All right. This is Cooking and Learning with Care segment with Chef Destiny and... Aja. Britton and Shawanda. All right. And it is a beautiful Monday morning, the 1st of March. Uh, happy birthday to any birthdays. I know it's a lot in my family today. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Go ahead, Aja. Morning. 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 Happy Monday. Everybody, today we are going to travel for food. We're going to go to Egypt. And I'm going to make Egyptian chicken and Egyptian rice. So let's get into it. Oh, everybody can see my pot. Okay. Today, like I said, we are going to go to Egypt for food. This is a great place to travel, as y'all know, to travel for food for a limited amount of money. So for right now, I'm going to be doing Egyptian chicken. So I have my whole chicken wings. I clean them, as you all know, took off everything that I can take off. Now I have a spice blend. And this spice, this spice um, Chef Destiny and I have about how when you toast your spices before you add them to the dish, it brings out the flavor and it makes them, it, it intensifies the flavor. So in this pan, I have black pepper, cumin, coriander, clove, clove, cardamom, paprika, cinnamon, and nutmeg. And this is a typical Egyptian spice blend that they put on a lot of their meat. Okay. So you want to toast it in a dry pan on low heat until you literally start to smell all of the spices that you put. It, it may take about three to four minutes. Now you also can use the whole spices, toast it, and then use like a coffee grinder or a spice blender. But I just kept it simple, bought them already grinded. Okay, so we'll repeat the spice blend one more time. Black pepper, cumin, coriander, clove powder, cardamom, paprika, cinnamon, and nutmeg. And these are a lot of warm spices, okay? So you would just take your spice blend and you would, of course, seat your chicken. Make sure it gets coated really well in this, marin in this dry spice blend. I personally will let it marinate for about 15 minutes, okay? before I put it into my preheated oven at 360, okay? So you're gonna bake these chicken wings. You can use legs, thighs, breasts. I just don't to use the whole wing. Let it marinate 15 minutes, put it into a preheated oven at 360. Let me wash my hands so I'm touch the chicken. Now, for the Egyptian rice, I want to start with a whole a short grain rice, okay? And you're going to use cinnamon and cumin and salt. And those are the typical spices that are found in Egyptian rice. What you want to do is I have some oil on my pan in my pot. I have some oil in my pot. It's been heating. Turn it up a little bit. And I'm just going to take my short grain rice and I'm going to toast this rice. You want to have brown bits in the rice. The nutty flavor that you get from toasting the rice is a key element to the Egyptian rice, okay? Also, what they, can, what they typically do is vermicelli pasta. They break up little bits of vermicelli pasta and they toast it with the rice as well. You may see mm. it. If you buy a package of rice aroni, like the rice tea pasta, um, shrivel in the pasta, that, I mean, in the rice, that's vermicelli pasta, okay? I'm not going to do it with the vermicelli pasta way. I'm just going to use the short grain rice. So like I said, you want to toast the rice 
until you start to get a lot of brown bits in the rice. And you smell it, okay? You want to make sure at this point that you can you, you stir things well. Yeah. Uh -huh. You want to make sure that you don't walk away. Keep stirring. Okay, then. Take care. The brown bits coming to your right. All right. I'm going to keep stirring. I wish you could smell it. It has a nutty flavor when you just um, toast it. It can see the smoke, but it's nothing burning. All right. So this is it's starting to get the brown bits. I'm not sure if y'all can see it from the vantage point that you have. But inside my pan, it's starting to get the brown bits. When it starts to get the brown bits, that's when you will add your cinnamon and cumin. Okay? And we know cinnamon can be used for sweet and it can be used for savory. All right? So we see that in the... Use a lot of Middle Eastern Milwaukee dishes, a lot of Indian dishes, they use cinnamon. Okay, so I'm going to put my cumin in there as well. And we're going to keep stirring until we get those nice brown bits. And I hope that y'all can see it. Once it's the yeah. rice started to brown, and you can smell the cinnamon. I can smell the cumin. Now I'm going to add some water. If you want to use vegetable stock, please go ahead. Okay, you see that? If you want to use vegetable stock, go ahead to give more flavor. And then you would just cook your rice the way you normally cook rice until it is done and fluffy. Okay? You cook your rice until it's done and fluffy. Now let me show you. I'm gonna cut that off to the side for the smoke to clear down. Now let me show you the finished dip. Okay, our finished Egyptian chicken and Egyptian rice. All right. So here y'all go. Oh wow. You have your Egyptian rice. I hope y'all can see the little. That's yeah, great. <laughs> your that good. Spice blend on your whole chicken wing. So this is a real creative, uh, inexpensive way to travel. Okay. So when you eat this plate, you're going straight to Egypt. Okay. Um, are there any questions about the recipes that I made? I have a question. What, what, how did you cook the, the wings? Did you bake them or yes. you fried them? I put them in the oven at Oh, that's right, at 350? Yeah. I missed one ingredient. I got cumin, paprika, nutmeg, salt, pepper, coriander, cardamom, cinnamon, but there was one more. Cloves. Cloves? Yes. Um, I got cloves. When you use the cloves, I forgot to tell y'all, please start off with like a quarter teaspoon of cloves. It's very strong. Cloves are very, very strong. Okay. So just in the nutmeg, start off with a quarter teaspoon of the nutmeg and the cloves. So they're a very, very strong, intense spice. But if you balance it with the other spices, it's, it's delicious. This really is a delicious um, meal, y'all. Also, if you want to learn more about Egyptian food, um, Amira's Pantry, she's a blogger, she's a chef, a woman chef. Um, it's National History Month for Women. She's a woman chef. And she has lots of lots of different recipes from the Middle East to Morocco to Egypt. You know, lots of desserts, lots of delicious food. So I encourage y'all to check out Amira's Pantry. Also, if you feel like cooking, um, off of John's Creek, there's an Egyptian restaurant. I forget the name. I thought I had wrote it down, but I but there's an Egyptian restaurant off of John Street that has delicious Egyptian food, also a beautiful Egyptian appetite. So that's, you know, check that out. Okay, 
Aja, I have a question. Um, when you started off cooking your rice, you kept saying you were toasting it. So how did you start it off? Did you put a little water in it or what? I mean, a little olive oil. Olive oil, okay. And okay. then I let it sit that heat first. And then okay. I added the rice and then I kept stirring until it got some toasty little bits on the rice. Okay. All right. Um, and that's, all, that's all I have today, Chef. Thank you. Uh -oh. All right, we're ready for Brenton and Shawanda hot tips and hacks. Y'all, Brent, where you at? Why you? You can't see me. The light, the lighting messed up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Bow with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Shawanda. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Morning. Uh, food tips and hacks. One, add one half cup pre-made pudding to your cake. Mix your cake or cupcakes will turn out extra moist and delicious. To prevent cookies from becoming hard, avoid adding more flour than necessary to the dough. Also, avoid mixing when, add, uh, when adding the flour. If you want your cake to taste like it came from a bakery, sir, if you want your cake to taste like it came from a bakery, replace the water with an equal amount of milk. Also, Replace the oil with melted butter and double the amount. And this is my cooking hack I have for you. Um, if you for, the, for those who likes to put foil in their pan, did you know that you can actually measure how much foil to use by putting the foil on the back of the pan and it should fit inside the pan? Uh, That's my, yeah. Yeah. All this, right. Thank all right. you. Thank you. Brittany, after dark, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you all. Happy Monday to you all. Thank you. All right. I'm going to start off with my uh, first cooking tip. I know you all are familiar with the term uh, work smart instead of hard. So this uh, first cooking tip is something that we practice in the kitchen a lot, is uh, prep and organize ahead of time because anything can happen. Uh, and you may not know who may make it to work, so you always have to prep ahead of time. Okay, number two, turn your pan handles to the side because if they're not to the side, anything can happen. You can accidentally uh, bump into the uh, to the handles, and you can uh, possibly get burnt. So we want to avoid that. Okay, number three, bring uh, meats out of the fridge early. And don't cook wet meat or fish. Okay. okay. The, uh, cooking hat. Next time you're ready to bake, find a spot for your icing, your sugar, and your sprinkles on your lazy Susan. This hat will result in a fun and organized decorating session without having to dig through the cabinets. Mm, okay. Yeah, I like that. Okay. That's all I have, Chef. Thank you. Yeah, Everybody, right. bring after dark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I know it's not Taco Tuesdays, but y'all know our Tuesdays are Copycat Tuesdays. But I'm going to do two different tacos today, a breakfast taco and a lunch or dinner taco. Now, what I did was just find stuff that was already in my refrigerator. So what y'all want first, the breakfast taco or the lunch or dinner taco? Breakfast. Breakfast. All right, well, we'll do the breakfast first. And what do y'all think that the uh, shell is going to be made of? Egg whites. <laughs> nope. A bis biscuit mix, mix biscuits. Nope. Lettuce. Nope. Uh, I'm adding a little butter and a little oil. Brand, waffle, just, wa waffle mix? There you go. Waffle pancake mix. Uh, okay. <laughs> mm. 
Yes, yes. Okay. Today is also National Peanut Butter Day. So I'm adding that into our breakfast uh, taco. So for our sauce, what I did, I took some peanut butter and I got crunchy peanut butter. And what I did to it for our spread, I added some yogurt to it. Mm. And the yogurt that I have is Starburst yogurt. Wow. Never had it before. Just thought it would be a nice little flavor. My waffle mix is the wheat waffle. Now, for what I mixed it with was not water nor milk. I used fresh pineapple juice, or you can buy store-bought pineapple juice. Mm -hmm. Want to make this as breakfasty as we can. And I thinned it out because you don't want it to be thick. I'm going to spread it out a little bit. So it's about this thin, and y'all will see it in a minute. And that pineapple juice is going to make this um, taco shell pancake really crispy around the edges. Also, the combination of the butter and the oil. We're just waiting for while we're waiting for our pancake to bubble up. I'm going to be using a fruit mixture. I have some cherries, strawberries, and blueberries in here. Now I'm just going to toss them in just a dab of agave because you are, we already got that peanut butter yogurt spread. And the other toppings that I'm going to put on here is just the fruit, the spread. We're going to put that on our pancake first. The fruit mixture, and then some whipped cream. And I already did one for you. Now at the store, they have um, these little taco little shelves, I want to call them, to where you can put your tortillas in after you cook them and they'll make the shape, keep the shape of the shell. But and we ain't had it. So guess what? Paper plate, folded in half. Once the pancake is done, oh, you will wow. put it right in between, like I did this one already. So it's going to give you that pancake taco shell shape that's going to stay. So you will put it right in between. It's going to fold up. I took two plates, smashed them together so they will hold its shape. And that's how we got our pancake taco shell. Mm. And it smells so good, you can smell all the pineapple coming out. But I'll show you real quick with this one. Turn up the heat. Let her go a little bit more in the middle. Now, for our savory taco, I had some leftover uh, coleslaw. I went to the farmer's, the cab farmer's market this weekend. And when I tell you, I thought the Whole Foods was something. Or, no, they the real deal in there. They got live everything. It was a whole shark in there. Uh, I got some edamames, some cherry tomatoes, the grape tomatoes, some bean sprouts. I love fresh bean sprouts. I got some broccoli slaw, and this was just done with a little bacon um, and a little um, dressing to go on top of that. For our seafood, I had some leftover shrimp and codfish, 
and that's what we're gonna use. Now you can either have less fish veggie or added you some seafood. Of course, I got some avocado and cilantro. And for that extra Asian blast, I have some plum sauce we're gonna put on to our taco. And just a splash of Cholula. All right, we're gonna flip, flip her over. And if y'all can see, she's crispy around the edges, like I said. Yes. And this pancake is going to be full of flavor because of the pineapple juice. Now we're going to take our pancake and you want to put it the first side you cook down first. And just going to fold it like that. Mm -hmm. Smash it between our two plates. Now, let's get the one we did already. All right, so I'm just gonna unfold them and spread some of our topping. And if you didn't wanna use peanut butter, you could use uh, either just yogurt or you could use some cream cheese. That's up to you. You could chop these up some more if you want. Use whatever different kind of fruit you want. I'm going to fold her back over. I'm just going to use this foil. Hold her in place. Get some of our whipped cream. Mm That's really cute. Yeah, looks good. And that'll be good for you, the kids. Uh -huh. A nice brunch edition. So there you have your breakfast fruit taco with a peanut mm -hmm. butter yogurt spread. Don't forget to tell them I taught you that, Destiny. Wait a minute. <laughs> Show all these crazy. Okay, so now I'm going to wipe out our pan. This is a clean rag. I'm just going to add a little butter. We're just going to heat up this uh, shrimp and cod just a little bit. It's already cooked, so we won't have to do nothing much to it. Now, for the tortilla shell, now you can already get the store bought. I'm not particularly a fan of the crunchy. I particularly like the soft. So what I did was took a soft tortilla. I just want to show you the difference. So this is a regular. And then this is the one I charred on right on the uh, fire. I just laid it right on top of the fire. Mm. One or two seconds, flip, flip. And that's a choice. If you don't want to char it, you don't have to. Or you could just toss it around in your pan and some butter. It's totally up to you. I'm going to get that in there. Yeah, 
This card was cooked to a perfect golden brown. When it first got cooked, it was so delicious. Mm. Like I said, it's already done, so you just want to let it heat up a little bit. What's your favorite taco? Mm -hmm. Nobody? Shredded um shredded um chicken and um lettuce and cream cheese and what you cooking now. Okay. <laughs> It still smell that fresh cow. It still smells so good. Y'all been to the cab farmers market? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, they have some everything in there. That that seafood part here ain't no joke. Them lines be long too. So I got some cilantro here, so I'm um, already had been pre-washed it. I'm gonna just sprinkle some on the bottom. Is that the one on Ponce Leon? No, or the Cab Farmers Market. It's out there by you, Auntie. Yes, yeah, on Ponce. It is on Ponce. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, you continue out Ponce. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's East Ponce de Leon. Right. Okay. I know. All right, so now we're going to add our seafood. Oh, good. Telling y'all, that cod, when you'd make cod, now I don't really like store bought cod, but if you could get it fresh yourself and make it delicious. Now, I'm going to add some of the plum sauce. Now, just so it could be in the middle. Now, if you want to heat it up, you can. Plum sauce is an Asian sauce. Mm. And it's delicious. I love it. All right, now we're going to hit it with our coleslaw. Oh, wow. <laughs> and this is what I mean by you don't waste nothing. Some people probably would have thrown this away or wouldn't mm. even ate it because it's leftovers, but uh uh. You just don't. Turn it into something else. Now here we got our bean sprouts, our tomatoes. That's our a edamame. healthy taco. <laughs> now, is you gonna be able to just pick it up? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. But however you want to eat it, it I gonna get in that mouth. A for oh. a knife and a fork. It's just looking so pretty. Mm -hmm. You put more on it? Yeah. <laughs> the more veggies, the better. Oh. I'm telling y'all, them edamames, they give it such a nice pop. Hit it with our Cholula. Mm. I don't know who is at my door. Give me one second. <laughs> That looks good. It does. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. <Somebody> OK, <laughs> y'all, sorry. Uh, last thing I'm going to add is some sour cream. Oh, OK. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The last thing you put on there, was that hot? The Lula, it's, it's not, not to me, because okay. I like spicy anyway. It's, but it is a very flavorful hot sauce. Like, you can taste, like, all the peppers, just the freshness of it. I mean, you know, we used to the regular Texas Pete and all that, but the Cholula just gives it a nice Mexican flavor. It's, and not just like burn up your mouth where you can't enjoy your food. We ain't done yet though. We got one more thing, man. <laughs> oh. Well, we can't not have a taco without an avocado. Oh, 
we just gonna wow, make it two, rain. Just make it two, rain. Wow, two people can eat off that. Did just you say make, make it, it rain? rain? Not make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> make it rain. We're going to make it rain. With the veggies. With the veggies. <laughs> All right, y'all. So there we wow. have it. Wow. Wow. Your seafood taco. That looks good. It looks wonderful. Wow. But how are you going to eat it? It's just it going to be a mess. You're just going to have to get in there and get <laughs> ugly. You're going to have to get in there and get ugly. That's all I, I can guess say. So. Or you're going to have to be bougie and do it with a fork and a knife. Now you're going to have to do a fork and a knife. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. So we got our breakfast taco. And our lunch or dinner taco. And that's just one taco. That's all you need. Mm. Mm. That would have been nice if we were at the Center for the Nutrition Month. You know when we used yeah. to do the um, salad? Yeah. Yeah, and you know how our seniors, they love uh, anything that's a lot. You got a lot of toppings. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care what it is. Just so long as they can get a lot of it. I forgot to add some more cilantro on the top. So. Oh, that's a masterpiece. That's going in the uh, in the food slideshow. All right, so now let's play Food Jeopardy. So I need two volunteers. Don't make me picky. Don't make me do like they do in church. And in school, let me call you down to the front now. All right, I'm just going to pick you. Then. I'll volunteer. Because you know I will come <laughs> for you, Mr. Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> man, who else? Don't be trying to cut, close out y'all cameras and stuff. Put <laughs> your frag with somebody. Pamela. <laughs> This is just going to help us all learn. This is not. Somebody easy. said Pam. Somebody said Pamela. Auntie Pam. Okay, we got Auntie Pam and Mr. Stacy. So y'all know how Jeopardy go. I give you the answer and you say what is such and such. Okay. Um, but I guess either one of y'all raise y'all hand so I can know who uh, tried to add, answer the question. See. What's the category? Food. Uh, I mean, but is it no no like salads, meats? Um, it's gonna be a different array of questions concerning food. Food, okay. fruits. Um, so let me get my share screen. And then before we go, we're going to go over some Mediterranean uh, diet food. Okay, so. All right. Or just because I can't, I can't do the, let me see if I can still do this. Well, I can't see all of y'all not playing the screen. So you just say, uh, say me so I know which one of y'all want to answer first. All right, here we go. Welcome to Food Jeopardy. Question one. Question one. The pearl type of this, the pearl type of this is Me. served as a vegetable or pickle and used as a condiment. Me. All right, Mr. Stacy. What is an onion? Onion is correct. This is served as a vegetable or pickled and used as a condiment. So that's one zero. That would be <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Hard sauce is made by beating together sugar, this spread, and a flavoring such as brandy. Hard sauce. <laughs> hmm. Okay, I'll give you a uh, three. Uh, 
what you call it? Multiple uh, choice. I give you multiple choice for this and for y'all. Okay. Auntie, you still with us? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so I give you <laughs> multiple choice for this answer. We're going to go Nutella, butter, or hazelnut spread. So that's your that's your uh choices to pick from. B. Okay, hey, Mr. Not... Stacy. Is it butter? Correct. <laughs> it's butter. Two, two zip. Come on, Auntie. <laughs> Hard sauce is made by beating. I'm a stranger. <laughs> uh uh, you one of the smartest people I know. It ain't about that. We just learning. Down back. All right, third question. question. This breakfast treat with wow. deep pockets was introduced to Americans at the 1964 World's Fair. A funnel cake. No. Mm. Uh, 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 this is Jeopardy. Y'all supposed to be saying what is. Oh, that's right. What is funnel cake? And Mr. Stacy, your guess. <laughs> What is a waffle cone? Man, I had to say incorrect, but it is Belgian waffle. Okay. Not a waffle cone, but a Belgian waffle. Oh, but, at the World's Fair? Wow. And see, they 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 deep pockets. Because you know how Belgian waffles got those deep pockets. Okay. Okay, so here we go. This Next question. This treat with deep pockets was introduced to a 1964 world. Answer there, the Belgian waffles. Belgian waffles. Next question. Thomas's is a brand of these famed for their nooks and crannies. Thomas's is a brand of these famed for their nooks and crannies. Now that should be easy. Me? Okay, Mr. Stacy. Bagels? And I see. Yep. Bagels? I don't know. <laughs> Can anyone else answer? Yeah, go ahead. English muffin? Correct. Correct. English uh -huh. muffin. The key words was nooks and crannies. It could have been other. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been a cookie. Tom Thomas was the key word for me. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And Thomas. That's correct. Uh, I I've seen them before, but I was thinking they were bagels. Oh, my oh, Lord. Lord. Next <laughs> This All right. This cured meat is in the classic McDonald's egg McMuffin. Canadian bacon. That's right, what Leon. Is, what is Canadian bacon? Yeah, what is, excuse <laughs> me, what is Canadian, what bacon? Is Canadian bacon? Correct. All right, I'm going to take the pressure off y'all. Just whoever answers. Y'all like <laughs> little kids in school. Lord. Seriously, who's so okay, who's smarter okay. than a fifth grader? <laughs> Okay, so well, here's the next question. Actually, an American recipe, this condiment may have been given its name because caviar was once an ingredient. But it's mustard? No. Nope. Mm. I give you what, a hint. What is hot sauce? What? No, 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 no. I'm gonna give y'all a hint. It comes on a corned beef Reuben, a, a version of it. And it's Brenna. also a dressing. Oh, 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 oh. Vinegar. Who said what? Vinegar. No. Nope. It begins with the R. Relish. What is right now? <laughs> it's the name of a country. Russian dressing. Correct. Stop. No. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next question. This condiment. May have been. Yep, Russian dressing. Okay. Okay. P.F. Chang's is an upscale bistro specializing in the cuisine of this country. China. What is China? Let's see. Is it China? Yes, it is. Yes. Who was that, Asus? Yes, it was Asus. The melting pot. Okay, next question. Dip into something different at the melting pot found across the nation and specializing in this Swiss dish. 
Oh, dang it. Well, oh, I won't say fondue. <laughs> I won't say fondue, but... It went so fast. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. A raw egg yolk usually accompanies this raw meat dish. And I ain't never ate it and probably won't. What is sushi? No, it's on the line of that, though. Bashi? It is steak tartare. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Not raw meat dish. Of an omelet. Mm. All right. It's an Italian version of an omelet served pancake style. I should know that. I believe I made this before. Frittata? Correct. Frittata. Okay. Yeah. Well, what is a frittata? <laughs> it's an Italian version of an omelet. No, that was answering the question. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's Jeopardy. What is a frittata? Okay. Y'all oh. keep getting me confused. Okay. <laughs> Next. Some say these dried treats are made from seeded grapes. Oh, let me hurry up and pause before I give it in. What is crazy? What is a great? What is that? No. Auntie Pam, you finally great. got one. Yes, raisin. <laughs> raisin. What is a raisin? Raisin. Okay. Okay. Non okay. botanically as citra. I'm sorry, that is the screen. Citra lanus. This huge fruit it's grows on vines as long as 15 feet. And black folks love it. What is a watermelon? Correct. That's what I thought, but that name threw me off. Citrus. I, I know, thought. right? Right. But at least now they won't, we won't never forget that. Type of food that comes in shells. What, is, pa what is pasta? What is pasta? What is pasta? Yes, correct, correct. What is pasta? Who else said that? I did. Was that Gloria? Yeah. Okay. Can we answer before the question is finished? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish it first. <laughs> okay. California vegetable with a crown and a heart. What is the artichoke? What is broccoli? Oh. What is artichoke is right, Mr. Right, Stacey. Artichoke. Okay. Artichoke. What is artichoke? Broccoli does have a crown, but it don't have a heart. That's oh, right. Okay. It's dead inside. <laughs> no heart. <laughs> okay. Carob yields a sweet pulp that is roasted ground and used as a substitute for this flavoring. This one even tricked me. But it's flavor. What is coffee? No, but it does again with what the is chocolate. Chocolate. Who said that? Miss Julia and Miss Young. Yep. All right. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Sweet pulp that is roasted, brown. We should know that because we just had the coffee video. Yeah. <laughs> Bursting with beta carotene, the melon we call this is actually a type of musk melon. What? What is the cantaloupe? Correct. What? Go ahead, Miss Leona. Cantaloupe. 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 Okay. Called this actually a type of musk. Okay. Cantaloupe. All right, Canelli, Canellini. Is a white penny bean and cannelloni is a type of this. What is macaroni? No, 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 no. <laughs> what is northern? No, what no, is... no, no, no. It's a it's a pastry. You know, the little thing that rolled up and got cream stuffed in it. No, Miss <laughs> Taylor is right. <laughs> That's cannelloni. Oh. The type of dessert. The type of no, Miss Peggy was right. It's pasta. Pasta. Oh, okay. Oh, I got one. You got one. <laughs> this word was once used for what the is medicine. Medicine. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Stacy, yes, correct. <laughs> okay. Wow. Miss Gloria, I like your head wrap. Thank you. All right, let's go. 
meat. When used to describe meat, marbling means streaks of this. What but is it's fat. fat. Correct, fat. everybody. Everybody get a point. You get a point. You get a point. <laughs> <laughs> marbling means streaks. That is right. Yeah. I think this is our last question. In 2006, the Chicago City Councilman banned restaurants in the city from selling this goose liver dish. This cafe? Nope, but it's right along the lines of that. Go, go a little bougier. Pate? A little bougier. Caviar? Caviar. A little bougier. Mm -hmm. I'll show you. And I want to know who done tried it. Not it so obviously, good. none of us because we can't think of it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh, why, why? Why? Yeah. why you say oh, that? Foie gras. Foie gras. Thank you, whoever that was. <laughs> okay. I didn't even know it was food. <laughs> yes, you did. No, I didn't. Did y'all enjoy that? That wasn't too yeah. hard. No, yes, it enjoy it. Yeah. 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 And we learned something. Hard. Okay, now before we go, I'll show y'all, Um, because I know some people have been asking me a lot about the Mediterranean diet. I know some people who are doing it. We made some Mediterranean dishes, so I'll share some with y'all. another level of health video in this video we'll be going over the mediterranean diet and the six best breakfast ideas when you are following an eating plan it can be easy to get into a breakfast rut fortunately the mediterranean diet emphasizes eating plenty of fruits vegetables whole grains and foods like nuts seeds and fish and these ingredients can create a variety of tasty and filling breakfasts. So, without wasting any more time, let's jump in and identify six of the simplest yet best things to eat for breakfast when you are following the Mediterranean diet. Number one, toast with peanut butter and banana. <laughs> this simple, no-cooked meal can be thrown together in moments and eaten on the go. With whole grain bread, you'll be eating more fiber and vitamins than in white bread, and that will help you stave off those mid-morning munchies. Peanut butter offers those great healthy fats with its protein, and the banana will add some sweetness, more fiber, and potassium. Number two, English muffin with greens and beans. <laughs> Easy breakfast on the Mediterranean diet is opting for an English muffin piled high with hearty toppings. Smear a whole grain English muffin with bean spread before adding a handful of potassium packed spinach and then top it off with a poached egg. Any bean dip will do here, such as hummus, black bean dip, or white bean dip. With a little salty and tangy flavor along with its nutritional punch, it's a great stand-in for cheese, which should be used only sparingly. Number three. Greek yogurt with Greek berries. Yogurt berries. Greek yogurt is strained in a way that makes it higher in protein than regular yogurt. Yogurt is also rich in probiotics, which are good bacteria necessary for many bodily functions. If you mm -hmm. want the sweetness, you can add a light drizzle of honey. And for an extra crunch, try adding ground flaxseed. It's rich in omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are important for fighting inflammation in the body. It's recommended to choose ground flaxseed rather than regular flaxseed because they are absorbed better in the body. Number four, mm -hmm. almonds and almond butter. Almonds are a popular snack and ingredient in the Mediterranean meals from breakfast through to dinner. Almonds offer a filling and energizing combination of protein, fiber, and healthy fats to help you feel satisfied. Slivered or sliced almonds are a delicious addition to your oatmeal, cereal, granola, muesli, yogurt, ricotta, or whole grain muffins. 
while almond butter is perfect drizzled over whole grain pancakes, waffles, and fruit. Number five, eggs. No, thank you. Incorporate protein-heavy eggs into your Mediterranean breakfast by topping smoked salmon toast with a poached egg or by scrambling them with feta cheese and tomatoes. Another tip from the Mediterranean diet, eat the yolks. Egg yolks contain oh. fat, which helps you stay satisfied longer. Egg yolks are also rich in choline, a nutrient that is needed for brain health and helps transport nutrients around your body. So there will be no egg white only omelets here as the Mediterranean diet focuses on whole foods. Number six, avocado. Although they are not native to the Mediterranean region, avocados do offer monounsaturated fat, which is the same type found in olive oil. These fats offer heart healthy benefits and can help with satiety, feeling of fullness and suppression of hunger. Avocados are also a good source of fiber at approximately 3 grams per serving, which is about one third of a medium avocado. Fiber also helps you stay full and helps keep your blood sugar levels more stable, which is crucial to stabilizing weight, mood, and energy levels. Though having an avocado and eating with a spoon is totally an option, you can also add avocado to smoothies, baked eggs, or even savory oatmeal. That wraps up this video on the Mediterranean diet and the six best breakfast ideas. So do you think you'll start adding some of the foods listed to your diet as they are actually pretty simple and not overly complicated to make? Let me know in the comment section. I'd love to. All right. Hope y'all learned something from that. Yes. I'm definitely in or uh, already been incorporating into my diet. Um but look like Mr. Stacy and Leona and Miss Glory, y'all was the top uh, answer. So good yeah. job, but good job for everybody. We getting to come over to eat. We getting to come <laughs> over there to eat. <laughs> we, we need to add, I'm gonna add the Food Jeopardy to our uh, already repertoire of games. Um, <laughs> and this month is also, the whole month is nutrition month, so. Okay. We'll be going over healthy stuff all the time anyway, but just we're going to be more focused on it this month and staying healthy and beautiful. All right, y'all know what time it is. Everybody, let's give ourselves some of that love yeah. and fall in love with the process of becoming the best version of yourself. Love y'all. Have a beautiful day. We will see y'all tomorrow for Copycat Tuesday. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.